Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we're going to get onto the rear end of the Alfa Ferrari. Okay, guys, well, I am back after a uh, short break on the Alfa Ferrari and uh, getting ready to get stuck into it again for 2021. Um, hopefully, this year, my plan is to try and get this car completed this year, but who knows? Like, it just takes the time it takes. But if you're enjoying the process and uh, enjoying coming along with me, please think about subscribing. It, uh, it does help us out. And uh, as of recording this, we're still only just shy of uh, that 100,000 mark, so it would be, be great if you hit that subscribe button. Anyway, let's start having a look at the back of the car. Oh, that is heavy. I just brought this up from under the house, but uh, this is the factory rear axle for the 105. Um, this car being a two liter, actually this is a factory uh, LSD limited slip diff. And by all accounts, these are actually a, uh, a really robust unit. So um, lots of people have been asking me about what I was gonna do as far as the rear axle and stuff goes. And I'm gonna keep this system. So this system is not perfect, but it's part of the uh, Alpha's character. And it's, there are upgrades to be done to make this quite an effective unit. So uh, I'm gonna be keeping this in the car. Lots of people were, were asking whether I was going to make the uh, the back of the car independent rear suspension. Um, it's not something I am sort of ready to tackle at this stage. It's not something I have any experience doing redesigning a suspension. It means re-engineering the whole back end of the car, which is a very difficult thing to do. Um, Classic Retro Power did it on their Alpha 105, which uh, looks amazing. Um, well worth checking out if you haven't seen Classic Retro Power's stuff. They uh, they do some some very very high end uh, restorations on these old cars. In my case, I'm going to keep using the uh, the the factory solid rear end um, with a few tweaks. But to start with, we need to get this cleaned up before I start playing with it and get it back in the car because this has got years of caked on grease and grime and grot on it. So. Let's uh, give, it a give it a clean so we can start putting it all back in and working out what we're going to do with it. That is very, very messy work. Uh, there was a lot. It's still not perfectly clean, but it's looking pretty good for now. I am obviously going to clean it up more later and paint it and all that sort of stuff, but at least now it's relatively clean for me to handle and put back in and uh, start working on what we're going to do moving forward. All right, I thought I'd go through now and just explain to you a bit about how the factory rear suspension on the Alpha works. So basically what you've got here, you've got your rear axle and diff, and, and they pivot up and down on these two swing arms. The springs sit in these mounts here. These attach to the bottom of the diff there and attach to the body here, and the diff goes up and down on them. And then at the top, you've got Quite a clever sort of uh, design really is this T-bar unit and what this does is this bolts on at the top of the diff and this thing performs two functions. So basically it's bolted to the body either side here and as the diff goes up and down this uh, keeps the diff from, from rocking backwards and forwards but also keeps it from moving side to side. So that this performs two functions quite well. Now the issue with this car is something that I will uh, try to explain to you right now. <laughs> so I spent a lot of time last night uh, making a bit of a, uh, a craft project so you guys can sort of get an understanding of how the basic suspension system works on the Alpha 105. So um, this is my axle and wheels here uh, that I've got on my Alpha. And normally it is actually attached by the T-bar at this top part of the diff. Now, it works quite well because it stops it from moving side to side and 
uh, rocking backwards and forwards, but it still allows it to travel up and down. The issue with this system though is that the roll center, so basically as the suspension travels side to side like this, it can move up and down, but it's, it's pivoting on this point here, which is quite high up, a very high roll center. The issue with that is, is that when it corners hard, you have the issue that the inside wheel lifts off the ground because the roll center is so high. What the race cars try and do is they want to try and lower this roll center much lower. And uh, it's quite easy to figure out roll center in this situation because it's, uh, it is where this pivot point is. That's the, uh, the roll center, that's where the suspension pivots around. I'll just demonstrate to you now uh, the main different types of uh, suspension upgrades for the rear to fix this rear geometry and lower this roll center so that we have uh, better traction throughout hard cornering. So what I've gone through and built here is this is uh, one of the common upgrades for the suspension is it's known as a Watts link. So generally what we have is you have two arms that are bolted to the chassis of the car on either side and then come together onto this transfer plate that's bolted in the center of the diff and pivots on the center of the diff. And these things can pivot here. So this in effect still locates the diff in the center. It can't go side to side because these arms are holding it there, but it can go up and down and twist around. And as you see, the benefit of a Watts link is that as you go up and down, that center pivot rotates and keeps the diff nice and central and um, is nice and even on both sides. It's relatively even in the way that it moves and it lowers the roll center. So the roll center in this situation is now ro rotating around that pin in the center. This is the third most common option and this is uh, known as a pan hard rod. So basically what we have is we have one end of a rod that's actually connected to the diff itself uh, as you can see here, and another end that's actually connected to the body of the car. And this does a similar thing to the Watts Link as it keeps the, the diff from moving side to side and, uh, and allows the diff to move up and down and, uh, and go through its system. It does have a negative in the fact that it is not entirely even on both sides because it does rotate through an arc. Uh, it's not even where, whereas the Watts link being uh, pivoting from the center is even. The benefit of the pan hard rod is that the roll center is actually sort of basically the center of the pan hard rod. That's where the pivot point of the suspension is. It's hard to sort of see the way it moves around, but that's, that's where it is, is down here. Whereas when you are talking about the Watts link, um, the Watts link is generally has to be higher because you have that, uh, that cam in the middle that needs to move around. The benefits of a pan hard rod is it's much simpler than a Watts link and you get a much lower roll center. The Watts link is more complicated, but um, uh, much more even, but you get a higher roll center. This is the system that I'm gonna be going with, the pan hard rod, again, for simplicity and um, also getting that low roll center so that we can uh, help uh, keep that traction on the inner wheel as, we, uh, as we're cornering hard. So hopefully that uh, brief discussion there was helpful. As I said, it wasn't exhaustive and I'm far from an expert on suspension, but that is the basic concept. Okay, hopefully that made a little bit of sense and you've got uh, a bit of an idea of what I'm uh, trying to achieve on this car. So uh, what I have here, this is a pan hard rod out of a Holden Commodore. So this is a factory uh, fitted part. They were fitted for, for years in, uh, in Commodores and they work quite well, they're quite commonly uh, available part here in Australia. And this is what I'm going to be fitting to the car and it just happens to be a quite a good size for this purpose. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be mounting one end low off of the diff on one side and the other end off of the body and try and get a nice low roll center. So fitting a pan hard rod is only part of the way there because the pan hard rod will stop the, the axle going from side to side. So when you're cornering hard, it's going to keep the axle from sort of coming outside of the body of the car. That's covered with a pan hard rod, but you still have the issue of the diff being able to rotate and rock backwards and forwards. So you need to be able to hold that. And there are a couple of different ways to do it. So in my case, what I actually plan on doing is uh, I'm gonna, I've ordered a bronze bushing for here and I've got a 
spherical bearing that I'm going to press and the machine into this factory housing. So I'm still gonna keep this T-bar set up. It is heavy, but it will be able to slide slightly on the diff to be able to cope with the, uh, the, the arc of the pan hard rod. And this will still stop the diff from rocking backwards and forwards. So this is still gonna be used. That is the way that I'm going to go. And uh, obviously there is a lot of work in making this actually work. So uh, let's start trying to mount this stuff in the car now and see where we can go from there. All right, so I'm gonna fit the pan hard rod to my car, but I'm not the first one to do this. Um, I basically, uh, when I was starting to look at my options for do it for the rear end, I talked to Colin Byrne. Uh, you should check out his channel, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, he's building an old uh, Stratos, over-engineering everything like crazy. Uh, really, uh, <laughs> really good channel to have a look at. And he, on his Alpha 105 race car, actually did the exact same conversion that I'm doing and put a pan hard rod onto his car and he's done it on his dad's car as well and um, had a bit of experience with a couple of things backwards and forwards that he's learned so I'm um, learning from his some of his mistakes and his wins and trying to take the uh, the best of everything to make it all work. He designed up some mounts in uh, on a CAD program and um, he sent me the uh, the details of what he's used previously these mounts here and I just got them cut out by a local water jet cutter. And uh, now I need to make sense of all these bits. As I said, there's no, there's no plans. This is just how it comes. So I've got to try and make, uh, make a jigsaw now of all of these random bits and see if I can put them together to make some sort of sense uh, as my mounts for the pan hard rod. So my jigsaw puzzle is complete, um, or mostly. Uh, this part here, I believe, is the part that'll actually go onto the, the, the swing arm mount on the diff itself. So this is the mounting that, uh, that mounts to the, uh, the, the rear axle housing. And uh, the sway bar sort of slots in here. As Colin has designed it, it's got multiple uh, mounting holes. So you can mount it at different heights to adjust the, uh, the use, but um, he's used it several times and done a fair bit of uh, work on track and tested it all out. And basically the bottom holes are the best ones. So that's just what, <laughs> they're the ones to use. So um, that's, the, that's the side mounted to the diff. And then for the side mounted to the body, we have this contraption here. So this will mount um, to the body and, uh, and running sort of parallel with the, um, the bar. So the, uh, the mount goes in through like so into the end here and down along the length of the diff. To go along with, uh, with what he's built, he sort of added extra reinforcing. So there's extra plates, there's two extra plates, one for either side that, uh, that also weld on top to give extra reinforcing to this actual part here. And I also have extra reinforcing plates for this, this piece as well. That said, I've got a leftover bit and I can't work out where it goes. Um, as I said, there were no instructions for this. It's just sort of have a look at them and try and work out how it all fits together and see if it all clips in there. He does not sell this as a kit. He just uh, uh, graciously sent me through the plan so I could uh, cut it out. And um, 
yeah, now I need to actually start tacking this together and see how I go about mounting it into the car. Well, that is a whole lot of welding later, and I have now TIG welded up these all these mounts, so they're you know nice and solid. So this, as I said, is the body side mount. It's all welded up, and the uh, diff side mount. So before I finish up, I thought it's it's easy to weld these up off the car before I go even tacking them on. Um, I've just got these extra reinforcing plates over where the panhard rod actually bolts through. There's two reinforcing plates for each of these mounts, so let's uh, go through now and <laughs> do some more welding. Reinforcing panels are all on now, uh, on both, uh, both sides. I finally worked out what this other piece is for. It actually welds on here like this. Looks a bit odd, but um, I will uh, weld this on now and I'll go into a bit of detail, maybe, uh, maybe in the next episode about what it's actually for, but uh, it'll make sense then. All right, so I've got my uh, brackets. They're all completely welded up now, all uh, tigged up all the way around, and they're looking quite decent. And you can see I've got the the diff end uh, already with the panhard rod mounted. And I just went to fit up the other end, and it looks like, for some reason, it doesn't fit the... Uh, basically, the uh, these holes on the edge here are too close to the end so that uh, I, I don't actually have clearance for the, the panhard rod to get through here. So um, I think they're just going to require some modification next week. Um, I can trim this out, just the, the section where I need to, and uh, and make a, another section over the top just to, just to give some clearance there and uh, it will all be good. But for now, uh, that is all the time I have. So um, I think on that note, it means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, welcome to Fun Car Facts of 2021. Here we go. The 1983 Formula One season saw a whole new car for Alfa Romeo in the 183T. The carbon fiber monocoque of the 183T was an evolution of the 182, but due to the banning of ground effects, a flat bottom on the car was now mandated. To attempt to balance this, they used more substantial wings. The naturally aspirated V12, which had been used since the 1979 season, was replaced with the Type 890 engine. This new engine was a 1.5 litre aluminium block turbocharged quad cam V8 with 640 horsepower. Unfortunately, the 183T did not prove to be reliable with a slew of retirements in the first half of the season. This prompted Alfa Romeo to fire the car's designer, Gérard Ducarouge. His replacement, Luigi Marmaroli, managed to get the car to be more competitive and reliable with driver Mal Robaldi, bringing home second place at both the South African and German Grand Prix. All right, I'm quite happy with uh, the progress so far. Um, it's getting my head around this uh, sort of changing the suspension and stuff like that is, um, uh, there's, a, there's a bit that goes into it. There's been a lot of planning on this side of things, getting things ready, getting things together to actually start to... Uh, making it all work and uh, craft think, projects yes and and my craft projects i Crafting. hope you enjoyed my my little uh, been animated craft projects cold and wet here so it's nice for <laughs> crafting it's always yeah. always fun crafting <laughs> was... kitchen table <laughs> but uh yeah so um next week we'll uh, hopefully get it uh, sort of into the car and uh, functioning the way it should 
So um, hopefully you join us for that. And Please um, follow us on uh, Facebook and Twitter and... Not uh, no, no, not on Twitter. No, I, don't, on Twitter. I, don't, I don't know why I said that. Sorry, I don't, I don't even know how to yeah. use Twitter. Yeah. Um. Great start of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, guys, and uh, we'll uh, uh, make sure you join us on Patreon if you want to help us keep doing these crazy things and we'll... and see the videos without ads yes. a day early. And we'll see you on the next one. See <laughs> right. you guys. Some more substantial wings, not finger wings. <laughs> Was replaced. <laughs> Aluminium quad block twin cam V8. <laughs> Not too many words <laughs> mixed up together. The 1.5 litre block turbocharged, turbocharged block twin cam V8. Damn it. Aluminium turbocharged block twin cam V8. No. Aluminium turbo. No, this one point. This. <laughs>